What's up, guys? This is Codes. Matthew Anthony here. Hey, guys. Anamar here. Hi, my name's Golf. Mac Vaughn here. My name's Winter. Dom Kane. Bjorn Akasson. Julian Gray. Christian Vance. The Secrets. The last Protocol Show. Alvin Gad. Off the hot. Hi folks Thank and welcome you. to another Sonic Academy live show with me, Phil Johnson, <laughs> and I'm joined with Chris. Stop with Chris or by Chris? By Chris, I, never, I don't know. Is it with Chris or by Chris? I'm joined with Chris or by Chris? Joined by Chris, joined with Chris, joined by... I'm, joined, to, I'm joined today by Chris, or with, I don't know. Anyway, welcome along. Yeah, How are welcome. You? I'm good. How are you, Chris? I am good. It has been a very busy, busy, busy week. It's it has. Our, it's our busiest week in Sonic Academy Towers uh, this week with Black Friday. We are yep. preparing lots of noob fest stuff and everyone is working very flat out. Yep, uh, hopefully a lot of new Ana 2 users and Kick 2 users and... Yes, so this show is dedicated to you guys. Uh, we have, you know, with Black Friday, uh, Anna has got how much off, Philip? How much? 70%. 70%. I've just thought, you know, what we could have had as a VT our what? Cats and Explosions Anna 2 ad. Oh, do, you remember? do you remember? Do you remember that ad? That was brilliant. Back in the day with the explosions and Wills ex- in, in it and everything. Was was Will in it? <laughs> the guy that looked like Will. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So welcome along, everyone, to Al. Hello, Florian. Uh, Helix Holmes, Techalite. How are you doing, Techalite? Who's doing sterling work answering all the questions on the forums because they're really busy at the moment. Lots of new people coming on board. Uh, DJ Cool, Deadly Custard. Sonair, who's dropped the DJ. I don't know where your DJ's gone. You must have lost it down the back of the sofa. Uh, Mark Anthony. Uh, uh, I'm going to try and ask here. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Carl Hudson, Carl Hudson, uh, happy here Thanksgiving to er- everyone out there, uh, all of America, waking up to Thanksgiving. Giving what thanks. Is, what to- is Thanksgiving? I'm not quite <coughs> sure about this particular holiday being a non American. Being a non American, I'm not 100% sure about this holiday being a non I think where they give thanks uh, were. Was it, it was, is it like the independence th- thing or something? Yeah, it's kind of like we got rid of the UK as ruling over us and we're independent from you weirdos. Is that not independent? I'm not sure. Is it? I don't, I don't know. know. Well, I suppose that would be independence. Eh? I don't know. Somebody, uh, if there's any Americans on the chat, would you tell us about Thanksgiving? I Come think on, it's man, just use give- Google. Okay, well, let's it use was... Google. Okay, what is Thanksgiving? What is thanks? <laughs> Isn't it to do? It's, it's like the pilgrims and stuff giving thanks for uh, harvest. Is it a harvesty festival? Is it? Oh. Uh, it began of a day of giving thanks and sacrifice for the blessing of the harvest. Thank you. That is it. There we go. Problem I solved. Ind- I did say uh, Independence Day at the start of. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> do you remember, uh, remember Will Smith uh, defeated all those aliens? Um, I think it's something to do with that. Uh, the way they. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, happy th- if you are in America, which you're probably crazy because it's very early morning over there, and you'll we, be up. We hope uh, your harvest came, and you were able to reap the benefits of your reap benefits of your harvest. Ho- hopefully, your harvest is on the two and kick two, and you're able yeah. to reap the and benefits. So, of... Do Americans like have Thanksgiving and then they do like Christmas as well? Do they or is it they? They do, but yeah. they don't have. I think you know the way we take kind of take a week for Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, they they only do really Christmas, do Christmas Eve sh- and then Christmas. Yeah. It's not a big. We absolutely milk the hell out of it for a week. I love a bit we, of Christmas. I, I'm looking forward to Christmas. Totally looking forward to just kind of just was talking to Will this morning. Cocktails, just a bit of, some board bit of games. Yeah, yeah. So love it. Uh, um, what what's happen- been happening, Chris, in the world? What's been in the world? Well. Uh, I suppose the story that caught my eye uh, yesterday came across this channel. It's called Oh that. Oh this. Yes. Oh, we'll do that first, will we? Well, well, you know, you've done your usual. I'm going to reveal the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
swing uh, yeah. swing versus key step. We have to watch what we say here in case we get uh we're, get sued we're gonna... by Beringer. So we'll say who, who allegedly a lot in this. Yeah, we'll say it. allegedly uh, they have copied Arturia. Yeah. Allegedly, what you're looking on screen looks very much like it. Uh, a lot of people getting really, really grumpy. In fact, the, the designer of the Arturia key step has come out and said he's really sad. He's really upset by this and he thinks it's wrong. And it's this is just allegedly stealing did you see that I got allegedly in there stealing? Yeah, well done. Uh, <laughs> lots of hard work has went into this, and to, to come along and just you know copy it allegedly the way they allegedly did. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, didn't Berenger try and sue like an employee of Dave uh, Smith Instruments? They probably allegedly did that. No, I think they there was a, it was a big thing on gear slots. Apparently, I remember. Uh, a while right. ago, and uh, someone had said something, and then the employee got sued or something. I don't know. But, it uh, is, uh, but that is dodgy. Good. I mean, it's dodgy ground. But um, it's okay, I so let's talk bully. about let's talk about what is appropriate. You know, uh, following as they call it. So they were they, Berenger did a response, and in which they sort of highlighted different um, tactical business techniques and one was you know competitor advantage and you know all these different types and one was like a follower tactic where you basically you know copy and improve <clears throat> other people's but, products now in my mind that sort of is more like you know you take the idea and then you expand on it now just for full ex 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 exclusure disclosure disclosure yeah full disclosure yeah, yeah. anna anna one was was quite similar to Silent. Um and we basically did that because um Leonard Digital wouldn't give us codes to give because we were we were doing we were using Silent in all our <laughs> in all our tutorials. So we wanted something cheaper that we could give to users. So we, we took the sort of general gist of it and made our own version. But I mean it was different enough that I wouldn't have called it copying as such. Well it it looked completely different. Yeah, it sounded but, completely different. Yeah, I had different it, functions and stuff. It had it had a similar layout, which is you know we kept that layout because it was sort of a familiar, you know, a, a starting to get a common sort of layout. Um, I don't think that is necessarily copying, but I think this is you know word for word. It's very very similar, isn't it? It's you know? it's it's. I mean, high cheek. The, the the four buttons there, though, even the arrow button at the end, you're, the three knobs. The, the four buttons with even the arrow button and even the, the strips, you're going, lads, mm. come on. Now, if you were to call up, uh, if, I don't know if you ever saw, you know, uh, Apple and Braun, who were a German brand. And right. if you look at uh, Apple products and Braun products. But did the Braun guy not originally design? No. Some of the Apple stuff or if you no? like, if you if you look at the if you look at your clock on your iPhone and then look at the Braun clock, if you look at a, right, an okay. iPod, an iPod, and then there was a Braun radio. Yeah. If you look at the grill of uh, uh, G five and stuff, it's they were absolutely design cues. Now, yeah, I think that's okay. And Steve Jobs himself, you know, what is it? Uh, good artists uh, imitate great artists. Steal is that kind of the yeah, vibe? Of some, the quote? something like that. So. Uh, yeah, I have a big my in my head. I'm going. Where does this end? Where you know? Okay, swing and the Archeria is everyone's up in arms. But then, yeah, th th those guys releasing. Uh, yeah, the mini Moog. They're going to be yes. doing an OB8. They're you know though is is it different because well, for example, the OB8 is not available anymore. I think uh, mini or Moog or Moog. Moog. They did discontinue the mini Moog at one point. Um. And then I think they brought it back after the boog came out, but um, it was I think at the time discontinued. Is that fair game then? If you know if it's a, a product that hasn't been around for years or is in, in you know in <coughs> inadvertently expensive? Yeah. You know uh, I think the ARP twenty six hundred. I mean again a, a non existent product. Although Korg then did bring their version, their version out, which was there's three or four grand or something. Um, yeah. And the Behringer uh, ones a grand. I mean. Is that different? Does it does the price point matter? Does it matter that you know Behringer are sort of hitting a similar well not similar because it's a few quid off, but doesn't make any difference. So people are justifying saying you know discontinued products all sense that's fair game. You can revive those. Mm. 
this is a current product by a competitor that you've got out and it's not uh, an exact copy, it's a clone. Hmm. Uh, so that's not fair game and that's where probably people are drawing the line wasn't there something about as well they were suing allegedly uh, somebody like Dave Smith or somebody one of those old sort of synth designers that uh, they bought the right or they snuffled the rights to some of the, his designs and he said look this isn't fair I uh, think what that was something to do with the chips wasn't it they, they, they bought the chip company that makes the CEM chips for their filters or something like that I can't remember there was something, something along the the, so there, there was these sort of slightly underlying nasty practices going on allegedly <laughs> like I was in trouble so I, I think Behringer uh, whilst doing uh, amazing amazing products yeah. that are really low cross there is a certain way to go about these things yeah and... I mean do they need to do I mean the thing is do they need exactly. to do that no you know, no is, is it I mean, does it just hurt their brand? I mean, I, I like, you know, I've got some Berger products. I've got a DM. Well, you've got it now, but DeepMind 12, which was a decent yeah. synth. And, you know, I've got a Behringer mixer, which was decent. <coughs> and although they were sort of Mackie. Yeah, that was a Mac- Mackie ripoff, wasn't it? You can't say ripoff. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Alleged, yeah. I, I, was a, I don't know. Ale- very similar. Yeah, so, and, and I think again, that, I think they don't. You know, they don't need to do it. They should be putting their money, you know, into developing. Probably, and us having just constantly say allegedly, this is. I find that strange. That's a bit worrying, it's a, isn't it? You know that it's you've a, got a that bully. We we feel like we've got this big bully corporation to, coming yeah. ready to come down on the small uh, guy. Small guy. He so says the, anything out of order. Yeah, it's absolutely. Bit, bit, bit as you say, they didn't need to do this. Don't do it. And uh, it was back to remember they did something a couple of, geez, about six months ago. That, that's how they started. You know, they what was it? The, they did. Um, was the composer not? I suppose the composer ended up being its own thing. But was it not like a copy of a DBX compressor or something? And then the Mackie the speakers. They did the Mackie speakers, and then they did the Mackie mixers. Right. Okay. They, we ended up in a court case with Mackie, and then I think they won that court case. Um. But yeah. So it's, I'm, I'm worse. I'm worse Mackie today. Hey. Yeah, Mackie who? Yeah. Uh, in other news, they, they, they are coming up with their own door. Did you know that? I did, yeah. It'd be interesting to see so, what the crack is so. with that. And So let's move on from Behringer. We have a, a really interesting relationship with them because we love some of their stuff, and they, but then some of the things they do, you're kind of going, please just don't do that. And just there's no reason to do that. So uh, there you go. In other news, yeah, did, this did really you watch caught, this video? This video? So the Mac Mini, the base model Mac Mini with eight gigs of RAM, eight gigs of RAM, uh, the base like with the M1 chip. How many plugins were they able to get going? Nine hundred, I think, nearly a thousand. I think in the end. I think they got a thousand in the end. Yeah. Sure, at the end, he, he added like five more or fifteen more to get it. So, so eight, this rather... was the base model M1 with eight, eight gigs, eight meg, eight, eight gigs eight of gigs. RAM, uh-huh. and. Um. Yeah, and they did because there was there was other videos with the the video stuff, and they were having issues with some codecs. But as soon as they used Apple ProRes, it was like amazing. Yeah. So th- um, this is at six hundred and ninety nine pounds, probably dollars, which is cheap as chips. Like, uh, Mac base model, and they were able to run Logic with uh, what was the track? One hundred and ninety six some... tracks with a thousand, a thousand plugins. <laughs> I think I mean, they had they had a, they had two hundred and sixty space designers or something, and yeah. it was completely mental. Um, and when they were hitting play, it wasn't like this thing was sort of juddering and sh- it was no. Just like, and that was at a hundred and twenty eight buffer setting, which is you know <laughs> was mental. That's it is it is mental. I mean, if if this is the kind of performance you're going to get once everyone else gets on board, it'll be mental. Yeah. I mean, if they do, you know, an M two with even more cores or a higher clock speed and uh, some bigger RAM versions with, you know, integrated, you know, with um, bes- uh, discrete graphics cards, then, yeah. I mean, it'll be completely nuts. It'll be game over for a lot of computers. I, th- I think if Apple could do that, if they could do a TAR with changeable uh, mm. graphics card and hard drives, I understand RAM is now not possible because they're they're welding that to the the motherboard yeah. however they're saying that you don't need 32 you just need you know you'll need less ram because it can address it quicker yeah. and stuff it. yeah uh, i mean i i was generally a bit dubious initially and then you sort of started seeing some of the specs uh, yeah. but this i mean this is mad performance for 
for the money. Uh, so if you go and watch this, this is from Present Day Productions. Go and watch the video. It's it's brilliant. Not right they now. did <laughs> not right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did a video on. Uh, they recorded our cameras that we use are black magic cameras so they recorded raw uh, 4k and tried to edit that in davinci resolve and it turned out to be a bit of a disaster mm. uh, stuttering timelines mm. then in part three they went back and they recorded black magic camera into prores and it was 4k and it was in this base model mac mini it was editing a 4k timeline not a problem now the other thing the render time yeah. wasn't wasn't particularly impressive on the video yeah 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 and i think but, that was to do with ram wasn't it or probably had to cache the the video to hard drive and that was probably yeah. slowing it down so at the moment uh, everything i've seen people are genuinely stunned at the performance on the native apps and sometimes on non-native apps are, are working quite well mm. uh but still a few hurdles in terms of uh black magic raw footage and stuff yeah so. i would like to do a shit out with like uh, an intel mac or or you want to an, an intel intel, an intel pc I, mean, I suppose the the big question is for a lot of people is you know compatibility with plugins, compatibility with other DAWs, and how quickly is Ableton, Cubase, Studio One going to get DAWs ready, and how quickly are people going to get plugins ready? I mean, as far as I know, there is I think the the VST and audio unit standard aren't affected. Is that right? I'm not sure whether it's that's just a big sir thing or whether they actually have to recode them for the new chips. We'll have to suss that out ourselves, obviously. Um. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting, but initial things are like, and a kind of, they're not mad expensive for insanely big power. So, you know, you see a lot of these Facebook posts and stuff, you know, can I run a Logic session on a Mac Mini? Should I buy a Mac Mini? Mm. I think you can now say without, <laughs> if yeah. you're using Logic Pro, yes. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the point they made was, you know, if you are buying a new computer uh, to get into music production, and you haven't done anything else. You don't have like a, a a set of you know historical plugins or stuff like that. Then it's a total no brainer. You know if you're just going to stay in the Logic environment, you know. Um, mm. But if you do have a, a lot of plugins that you are, are used to using and use other DAWs, then wait, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So demos, there you go. Demos, Chris. Do you want to? Uh, do, do you want a little VT? Do you want a little VT? V VT. Because what are we VT mate? What what day, what week is it? What? Well, it's Black Friday. It's Black Friday. stuff. And if if you don't know, we have a ten month subscription for forty nine pounds. I've been saying forty nine ninety nine all day, and then got told off saying it's not ninety nine. It's just forty nine quid. So if you want a ten month subscription, access to over five hundred courses. I think something stupid like I'm I'm going to say four thousand hours. Uh, four thousand hours. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, of, it's it's ridiculous of content. Uh, access to all the resources that's downloadable, the stems. I wonder, the, I wonder if you okay. get like all the samples from all the courses and put them together in a pack. How big that pack would be? I would say gigawatts. 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 Petroflips. Uh, so for forty nine quid, you can uh, get access to all the courses that we and all the brilliant content we're bringing you until this time. Well, September next year, which is amazing. So get on it. This is a one time, one week offer. So once. Uh, this week is over. It's gone, never to be seen again. Where did it go? So, uh, jump on it, guys, if you wanted to uh, stay with Sonic Academy and watch all the amazing content. Okay. More uh, we'll play VT. A, we'll play a little VT explaining everything. just like to clarify some remarks were made previous to that video about the uh, watch time on the site. I said 4,000 hours. <laughs> I may have got a little bit excited. I've just been pinged a message. It's actually 1,100 hours. So I, I rounded it up to the nearest 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to check. Because how many courses do we have now? 
Uh, if you hit forward slash subscriptions, it'll tell you. Forward slash subscriptions. Couldn't find that page. Subscription. Subscription. Oh, is that what it is? It's 5,800 videos. That's where I was getting confused. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've, so we've got 572 oh, courses. Yeah. And five. there's 1,151 courses. No, ours. What? Oh, ours of ours? Yeah. Five, 1,551 ours. That's a lot of ours. That's a lot of ours. How, How many, many days is that? Divide that by 24. Quickly. Somebody get a calculator out, fellas. <laughs> Okay, Divide that by 24. How many days of purely watching Sonic Academy could you get through? If okay. you had. Okay, let's say 100. Let's say you can watch eight hours a day, right? Right, okay, yeah. Because that's a reasonable amount to watch. You do have to eat, sleep, and you know, maybe uh, wash the other 143 time. days you, you could be watching videos non stop for. That's nearly four months, five months. There you go, half a year. Half a year. Half a year. There you, there you go. Year. If, you, if you want to spend half a year just watching, watching tutorials. There you yeah, go. That's, there you go. And it only costs 49 quid. There you go. So, Alid, there we go. We've pushed your Black Friday day. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on now. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump into... Uh, Demo Doctor. Demo Doctor. We used to have a... T- where did it go? We used to have... Don't even think... Of, don't even look for it now. But uh, we'll just do it live. Demo Doctor. Okay, so we're going to jump in and have a look at some demos. Thank you to everyone who sent in demos this week. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot in this week. So um, we sort of prioritized um, a lot of subscriber ones this week because we had a lot yes. of new subscribers on Black Friday. So these are all all subscribers. We don't always just do all subscribers, but just thought this week since there were quite a lot. Yeah, I think that's, re- that's a reasonable thing. Do you not think? I think that's reasonable, yeah. S- Oh, here's a question for lately. How do you, how guys, how do you make lately based in Anna Two? Funny Ooh. you should say that. Ooh. Now you... that's coming up next. So after demo doctors, we're going to show you some tips in Anna, but we have a new pack in production, and lately base is in it. Cool, isn't it? It is. <coughs> Why should you demo doctors when we send you? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, like that. About. Get straight into the action. That base, I really like the idea, but to me it could be like tighter and it, it sounds a wee bit um, not like tight enough. Maybe a bit loud, what do you think? Let me have a listen. Yeah, it needs to be sort of shorter, more staccato. Yeah, more staccato, yeah. Maybe some sort of um, you know randomization on the on the timings, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a cool track. I really like it. I mean, it moves along at super speed. It's only there's only two minutes here, so I'm guessing there's a, maybe a, an extended mix, mix or it's a work in progress type thing. Um, I really like the the gist. I liked how quickly it moved. Um, 
Uh, the breakdown is really good. I think it could be milked a bit more, just it sort of could be more expansive with bigger a reverb on that sort of sample that's being used. Yeah, get just a massive lush reverb on that. How many times a week do we say that? <laughs> I'm gonna just put a big reverb on it right now. <laughs> just to see just to see what it would sound like with a big reverb I'm going to just plot but this. I thought your famous saying was you don't want to hear the reverb you want to feel the sometimes reverb sometimes you want to just like hear the reverb how big a reverb more oh, 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 epic then have it over that drum roll and then start making it drier and drier and drier until it kicks in again. Oh. Instantly 2.3 times more epic. your track there you go so check, send us a check in the post it's like one of those apple presentations 2.3 times more epicer <laughs> <laughs> um I, I really like this track i think it's got loads of potential uh, i think yeah just bigify the breakdown yeah um with just adding just drop a reverb a massive big reverb on it um and then tighten up the the, the bass just make the notes a bit shorter and it sounds it sounds like there's a phaser or something on it that I think slightly takes away from the like it's it's quite quite sort of resonant -y. takes takes a sort of a transient like screws with the transients a little bit or a bit yeah you want to sort of hear that unless you get you layer something under it like you know like almost like a kick click or something on there just get that who was there was a track last week that did did a really good job of um what was the track last week? This one. Was it this one? Had nice. That one. Is it that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's like it's on the I think that a bit more of that vibe. Yeah, so a bit woolly, you know, just get up bit yeah. quicker and attack here. I think would work really well. Yep, cool, cool, cool. Okay. And who, who does that come in from? That's Burm, 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 Murder, Burm, Murder. Sorry, who? B, B, Murder. B, Murder. Well, he was on the chat. He was on the chat last Burm, week. Oh, he's on the chat. He's on the chat. Hi. B, Murder. Oh my God! There's my dog outside barking. Can you hear it? <laughs> oh. Don't can I give a bit of advice to anyone? Don't get a dog. <laughs> and there's there there's my niece, Maya McLean. I'm gonna say hello to Maya McLean. Um yeah, we're we we I'm getting pressured How about a dog. Oh yeah? Yep. I will lend you my dog for three days and that will put any notion out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, we fine. we already get to borrow the, the we've got like uh, neighbours who go on holiday and they let us take their dog. And the kids love it for like a day, two days maybe, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, they're yeah. just like bored and I'm the one that ends up having to go and take for walks and pick up its poo so mm -hmm. i did i did a poo run on saturday i don't know why i'm talking about this 13 <laughs> bags i lifted from my car <laughs> 13 bags of poo so there you go there you anyway go. let's Fun get times. back to demos okay <laughs> demo two a bit of hc techno okay and this comes in from wazak is it he was on the chat last week. I don't know if he's here this week. If you are, say hello. <laughs> Show me the lights. It's just cancelled his dog order. <laughs> I'm afraid you can't. Once they're pregnant, they can't become unpregnant. Can you hear it? The dog's still on. Oh, no, I can't hear it. You can't. It's not audible on the, the show. So again, 
What do you think of the intro? Is it enough? Is it enough happening? I think, or? Uh, well, I think we always say this, you sort of maybe want to hear atmospheres more, or more interesting atmospheres, mm-hmm. get more reverb on them, just create a bigger sort of s- space. I like some of the weed noise, There's some nice noise. Yeah. Oh. I like that weed. Deep, 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 deep. That weed. Percussion thing. Yeah. Now, here's, I've got to say something that sounds a bit psych trance. Is this going psych trance or is it going so, no. techno? Somebody's asking on. Oh, so you've answered him. Somebody's asking, are, are we, can we expect new features? Are we going to talk about that? Um. Hmm. Yeah. We'll ask, we asked the Oracle that is Brian. Can we talk about it? Sounds a bit stompy, like those those noises. I'd like to. It's a bit like. Yeah. It's a bit I'd like to get more of a groove into there. But techno is techno always groovy? It can be like it's just about yeah yeah it's maybe just a preference thing. I prefer yeah. to have a bit more groove in it. Yeah. It's, it's very Germanic, isn't it? It is. Mesmerizing, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of draw me in here now. I like the I like the sort of chord change going on there. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. Definitely works for me. You've you've won us over. Use a reverb just building up there. I, I can hear this on a big system, yeah. It's like a big warehouse project sort of yeah. thing, yeah. Well, what was the track? Was it called Pentap? Do you remember? Was that a track? I don't know. I'm not very familiar with the old uh, Techno stuff. Haunt him. Haunt him. No idea. Renato. Renato going. Oh, you remember Renato? Yeah. It just sort of reminds me of that, but the, 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 it was a sort of drivey track, but it, it's had sort of more of a groove. Let me just pause this for a second. I don't, you won't be able to hear this, though. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, turn up the volume. Yeah, there was just more interesting stuff going on. Um, sorry, <laughs> I was just I just wanted to, uh, to get in my ears. The the di- yeah, yeah, <laughs> I just yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. hear the difference there. Yeah, sometimes you get a thing in your head. You go, oh, is it that good? Joe, you know, but we're talking about that stompy thing. That pon pon tape had that like stompy, but it, 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 you know, used like different things and interesting stuff for claps, and there was like you know different vibes going on with that. I, yeah, would say, very... I would say it's a really good reference for this track to have a listen to and see because I really like the stompy vibes. I like that um, sort of synth that works in the breakdown. It sort of loses me a bit here because we've, we've heard all this back here. It sort yeah, of needs yeah. to build a bit more. Um, yeah. And Pontip just has a, has, is really good at building that, that sort of um, just building the vibes throughout it and keep, keeping it going with just interesting claps and drums and percussion and stuff like that. What do you think about that, Chris? Uh, I don't know the track you're referring to, and I'm not a I'm not a huge techno aficionado, but it feels like everything's on the one, two, three, four, one, you know, and you need a bit more, you know, something on the off beats or something yeah. to highlight things. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a little bit too stompy. I think the stompy thing works, uh, but it's just maybe a little bit too stompy. But really nice sounds. It drew it definitely drew us in, and the chat seemed to like it. Yeah. 
So, uh, contender for track of the week. Hmm. Should we mention at this stage we should start a label and release some of these? <laughs> <laughs> this is the track you put on to meet your 45 minutes. You just set contract obligations. What? Just chat, just chat. This oh, is the track chat. you put on to meet your 45 minute DJ set contract obligations. Oh. Just, just like a nine minute, just banging it out. Oh, saucer of milk, table two. <laughs> um, right. Okay. okay. Kenny D. Kenny D was on the chat last week. Where have all these people Kenny gone? Kenny D was on the chat last week. From his artist name? I feel like Kenny D should have a saxophone bass track. Some melodic fighting? Is there something in the low end that's fighting with the melody in the top end? Yeah. It, it all seems a little bit disjointed. Yeah. Like the first note of that whoop 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 is like. the rhythm of the first bit of the bass and then it changes yeah and it sounds a bit off yeah i get what you mean and the bass becomes less defined Lovely and spacey, yeah. Sort of, you know, some cooler drums in there. Yeah, some nice, really nice sounds in it. That to me, if you're going to listen to Frankie Wah, the sort of break beady, trance wacky, track boxy thing, where it's more breaks and more retro, mm. it just doesn't sound quite polished. Yeah. Too long, way too long. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm assuming it's sort of a probably a beginner or sort of less experienced producer. Um, and uh, it's hard to know where to start with a track like that because some of the, there's some nice elements in it, but I think um, my advice would probably be, you know, at, at this stage, maybe try and copy more closely tracks that you like and yeah. work from there and sort of, you know, copy the arrangements just to see how things and build-ups and things like that just to get a, 
a better idea of, of how things are structured uh-huh. and the, you know, the different elements and sounds and how melodies are sort of put together. You know, there was a lot of, there's like the notes there and those melodies like were held on and stuff, which sounds weird to me. Like, it, like the doo dee doo dee doo dee. It, it, it's, it very much feels like somebody's playing, you know, they're, they're like a player and they're playing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the next, you know, the, the, the next melody. And then there's just loads of melodies going on and no chord change. You know, there's no defined chord changes, but loads of melodies happening. Uh, no, there's there, there's kind of, there's a couple of interesting ideas. So it's, it yeah. is changing. It's just not one idea. <clears throat> map I mean, I, I still use template, you know, track templates to, not track templates, but like I would get a, a track that I liked if I like how it was structured and put, you know, initially put it over mine just to rough out the arrangement. Okay, um, uh, so kind of what Behringer do? Yeah. Where's <laughs> the um, chat? All the way back there. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good starting point, and then and then just try and sort of you know again it goes back to that critical listening of listening to how the elements are built up and where they're sort of placed and how is the melody melodies being used and what sort of reverbs on them just try and really tune in a bit more to the tracks that are in the track yeah okay cool yeah uh yeah no it, it, just, it does sound like somebody just starting out on their journey and you will learn as you go along you'll mm. you'll with each track you'll go oh, i'll do that a bit better do that a bit better so keep yeah let's, let's keep get her, on the last keep one going and send us more stuff when you get it yes keep going because i know with every track you do you will get better and better and better Okay. So, this is Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony's on the chat. Normally a good, good bit of output from Mark. So yeah. Instantly nice, nice groovy, big, wide, well mixed drums. Yep. I'm in the nice groove, kick. man. I'm in the groove. That. Sort of breath's a bit dry for me. I don't mind it. Feel a little rhythm. Yep. Could dance to that rightly. When you make me. Oh. When you make me. <laughs> Here comes the drop. Don't let us down. Don't let us down. Is he going to let us down? Feeling the vibes. Really nice. Feeling the, the vibes. vibes. I would have had maybe one other element come in there. I don't know. I think if you if, it, if that was coming in on a club system, that bass would be more than enough to just, yeah. Yeah. you know, keep you grooving. And that's probably just where the DJ is going to mix in anyway, so you're probably not going to hear any of the previous stuff. You've got the club system there, does it sound good? Yeah, it sounds really good. Oh, like this. Where's the sample from Mark? Close. <laughs> Maybe push that a bit higher in the mix. Yeah, get more effect on it, make it more interesting, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I dig this. Yeah. Loop Masters will go. Loop Masters, there you go. Really nice. Oh, like that. Like the effect. stab. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really nice. Do you think the bass is defined enough? Um, don't, don't speak for a second, I'm going to just turn it up. Yeah. It's, really good here. It's, a, it's a low end thing, but it, it, it has the vibe. Like,
like that wee noise. Yeah, it's kind of it. It's the it's dissident. This is version 3 of about 10. Good, good, good. The vocal just is a bit low for me. I'd rather have it more in my face, maybe less. Yeah, I would do more with the vocal, just have it. Yeah. I mean, there's Here. a delay on it, but maybe just have some, bring it up, have more of an effect on it. And maybe do some throw delays, you know, like... Yeah. 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 Really, really milk the vocal. Yeah. One, two... Yeah, that works for me. It's really, really good. Yeah, just I would, uh, as Chris says, just some sort of dub delay type stuff on there, just to get the vocal going in the breakdown, or maybe a chop up vocal there. Or, you know, just yeah, really, really cool. So, is this track of the week? I would say this is the track of the week. Yeah, track of the week. It's funny how track of the week is always the last track. It is, isn't it? Kind of, kind of needs to be done. Otherwise. First track would be track release. <laughs> well, there you go. That's uh, demos. The week. Sorry, yeah. we got more in. We got more in than we can play. So yeah, we always we only do four a week. So um, we have a bunch there that we did. Um, do cool. some more next week. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's wonder where you were going there. Uh, so thank you very much for sending in your tracks. As always, don't forget to. I'm gonna. Can you hit the subscribe button? Are you hitting? I can't see. Are I you don't know. Did it work? I did work. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so don't forget to subscribe, to hit the bell notification, and to like, and send us a little comment. Uh, let us know we're doing a thoroughly good, jolly job, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's bash so, through some Anna 2 stuff then quickly. We do kick first or Anna first? Uh, kicks, kicks. What do we got? Somebody, you you, you got the questions there, haven't you? Gone uh, on, on, the, on the chat. Somebody's asking, is Anna 3 coming? No. Anna 3 is not in the works yet no. we are still working on anna 2 yeah um we are working on multi-sampling as the main feature what um, multi-sampling yep yeah, so um you'll be able to just do some crazy stuff different layers ask layers and <clears throat> or... we are we're very close to that aren't we i would say yes yeah, yeah. so i'd say we were we are close to beta ing soon yeah, so multi-sampling means that we'll have you'll be able to have pianos mapped across the keyboard in all three samplers. Yeah, so in all three samplers. So, um, and we have been working on a bunch of content strings and um, choirs and various other bits and bobs we, for. We have that we have cellos recorded. Out. We have violins recorded. We have grand piano, Steinway grand piano recorded through various different mics, and we've been working diligently in the background getting all that recorded and ready yeah. and edited and uh and we're at the point where we're starting to build yeah. stuff so. and i would like to add a few other features but i guess the multi-sample will go out first and then we have a list of other features um which we will get to at some point um yeah. you know anything, anything on the list what's on the list i'm not gonna say no. stuff on the list we got we got yeah we're going to continue development um for quite a while yeah, there's no, no they, reason it, it, to really it, it, change it now. I don't think there's no Anna. I think it'll be two point five. There might be a three at some point, but it'll it'll be an iteration. There won't be a, a it won't be a new version like we did with Anna one point five to two. I don't think so. Yeah, it won't be a rewrite. It'll just be getting so. Yeah, uh, the engine's, what, what the engine's still holding up and it's um very versatile. So no reason. So to... Tudor, Tudor Gibson says replicate Moonman bass, and I will buy Anna two. It's a bit. It's a bit of a tall okay, order. Okay, what's Somebody... Moonman bass? Gonna... Uh, what do you call them? Is Ferry Course in Moon Man? Moon Man. Don't worry. I just want to. Moon Man. Oh. Is it a. Give me the track name. Moon Man. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember. Uh, Galaxica, is it? Moon Man Galaxica, I think. Moon Man. Gal Galaxy Galaxica. It's all one word, Moon Man. Okay, is this it? 
Uh, I don't know. Come here. We'll be back after this ad. <laughs> oh no, he's, he's he's on another. Oh, he's on the wrong track. What? Cascade Trans Transcend. Cascade Transcend, Min Man. Yeah. Cas. I'm gonna show my board. This is not gonna be. You're not gonna be able to see this. Cas. Cascade. Transcend Moon Man Remix. Is this it? I don't know. Is this it? I don't know. I presume it's the same as... Uh, what do you call it's, fairies? It's the fairy chorus. Yeah, yeah. Should we try to do it? I thought we were going to go through features. <laughs> Let's do features first. Don't get sidetracked, Phil. Focus... <laughs> Focus, stay, stay on, stay on brand, stay on brand. Okay, the first thing is okay. Uh, Anna two, FM. How does it work? FM. How does it work? Okay, let's go. And in patch, FM. So the the general idea of FM is that you modulate the signal of one oscillator with the signal of another oscillator. Mm -hmm. So. And generally, you would start with some sine waves, but you can use triangle waves as well. But sines give you the cleanest sound. So uh, what you need to do is the FM only works on the source here. So you've got source. You've got either 2, OS2, or OS3. So you select your source. Yeah. So we're going to be modulating this waveform with the waveform from OS2. Okay. So we need to turn it on. You can either have it the volume up or have the volume down it's up to you whether you want to mm -hmm. add that into the original signal but for now we're going to turn the volume down so we only hear it modulating the original waveform we won't hear its direct sound so we've got a sine okay. wave yeah okay yeah That's and then when start. we bring fm up wow so you get that very distinctive FA. Yamaha DX7 sort of noise. Yeah, okay. So it's always good to pitch it down to get the nice donks. And then the pitch of OS2. What has happened there? That's my mouse. The pitch of OS2 um, will affect that. There we go. Hey, Doctor Who. Yeah, and then so I think you can get like so another thing we I do a lot with this. So you right click. Yes. And then you add it to a mod env. Yes. And then you can just do a normal sort of envelope on that. Um, so sorry. You're doing an envelope on the uh, on the, the FM source, knob. just the on FM the knob. FM knob, right? So this is the donk. Yeah. So are you using that like a, an amp amp then? So this is just modulating the amount of this of signal. FM. Yeah. So, so you're. It would be just like me going like this. Yeah. So the amount of FM signal. So we're starting quite open, bright, and then getting darker, and you get the donk the donkiness. And it sometimes helps to have retrig on both of them and get a more stable sound. That's the most common use for the sort of FME. Cool. Next question. And then you can go. Uh, wait, oh, we're not finished with right. FM just Fine. yet. Five. So you can modulate the modulator. <clears throat> okay. You with me? I'm with you. So we've mo we're modulating the signal with oscillator two signal. Yes. Now we're going to modulate oscillator two with oscillator three. Yeah. So, so it's it's getting modulated and then it's going into a modulator, modulating again. Exactly. In so then you can get get even more modulations. Yeah. 
And you can do crazy stuff like, you know, make that really high, and that's when you start getting your, like, yaw yaw sounds. Yaw yaw. So good for dub steps, is it? Yeah, I mean you can you can do crazy stuff like add like loads of voices. So you could go in and get a wub in the GM. Yeah. Go and, um, go and get a wub preset from GM. Okay. And go and I'm no, going to mo modulate yeah. this, are we? Yeah, the FM. Um, where is our... Where is our well, yeah, we're going to modulate it. I'll just do it here. Right click. GM1. And we'll go into the big one. And then where's the presets up here? Yeah. And then go into... Uh, there's a whole folder of wubs at the bottom, isn't there? Oh, there you go, there. There you go. I'm gonna move you on, Philip. Okay. Time sorry. Sorry. I was just Time getting was making the, making the webs, making the webs. Right. Lots of people ask when they get on uh, the first thing they they understand the sort of signal path. The one area that kind of confuses them is how the ARP and CMD work. How the ARP and CMD work? Let's find out right now. <laughs> <laughs> With Phil. Okay, so let's get a, a basic, a basic wee patch. Little patch, but don't say me. Yep. Okay. Cool. So a um, sawtooth, rolling filter, bit of envelope. Okay. So, ARP. Let's do yes. this first. People get confused with this. Note one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it is pretty simple. It is. The is ARP it? has six note bins. Okay. Right. Bins, I've never heard this word before, but I like it. I'm going with it. So you can play six notes. The first yeah. six notes you play, if you play any notes after that, they get discarded. They yes. fall out of the bin. Yes. It's like discarded like a lonely child. Yeah. Uh, so you get your six notes. Um, so I'm just playing four here. And depending on what line there are is depending on where that note will play. So let's clear this all so we can play all four notes together. Okay. So it's a chord. Yeah. Let's yeah. put retrig on. Cool. Get it. And then we can, you know, do them like this. Individual single notes. Yeah. Or you can do mixes and matches. And then you can also go up an octave above. Ooh. But you didn't know, but you didn't know that, did you? Hmm. And then you can do octave there. Hold on, there's, there's stuff there. Do that in there. And then you can also do an octave below. So you're, you're currently... Sorry, I'm just you're holding currently... four notes. Four notes. So what happens when you hold one note? It so when okay. So what? we've got note wrap on. Yeah. Okay. So if we didn't have note wrap on, if we had just low to high, it would just play whatever was on the low notes of each. It would so just play what on is on note one of one each of one. the octaves. Yeah. 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 When we have note wrap on, it will play, um, it'll use that single note to play all the notes. So a, a note that's anywhere on the thing, it'll play it. Okay. And then if we got octave wrap, it'll yep. it'll take any of the notes on the second, third, and fourth and play them an octave higher. Ooh. So 
you're currently playing one note. Then yeah. how does so we've got, how does this tie in then with C M D? Okay, let's go back to low to high. So we can see. So C M D and we'll just What does it what does it mean? What does it mean is what everyone CMD wants to know. C M D means chord memory device. So this device will memorize chords. Ta-da. So the first mode is single mode. Um this is put your chord in. And it will spread that or play that chord across any of the when you play a key, it just transposes that chord up and down. Yes. But wait, that's not all, is it? No, that's what you want to do for like stabs. Yeah. So if you're stab. making a house. Insto stab. Insto stab. So and then multi? multi. So in multi, you have to, you can put a, an, in, a separate chord on every note. Yes, I, so a I brand new it chord, as... a brand new chord on every note. Any note, one note, any note, any chord. Is that right? right? So we're going to pick our, our our bass note. Yes. See. Okay. We're going to hit learn. Yeah. So that's our trigger. That's, yeah. Note. And then I'm going to play a chord. Right. Then I'm so going to next... play a different chord. And then I'm going to play a different chord. And they don't have to relate. So it's not like you go. You you can program a C. Seventh on a C, you can have A minor on the C. Yeah, so just done a bunch of chords, and now those chords are saved to each of those notes. Okay. Yeah. And then you can either, if you want to move your chord, so I won't say I want the chord on a different place, I can just transpose, transpose it down. Or if yep. I want the, the trigger to be on a different place, I can transpose them down. Okay. I'm with you. And then you've got reset, neck, reset, etc. So you can. But what if you wanted to then feed that into the ARP? And you, you, but I want to see both at the same time. How do you do that, Phil? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like magic. Turn the ARP on. So let's get let's load in some preset. What have we got? Good presets. Let's, uh, I'm gonna move this up an octave. That's where my keyboard is. Downward. There you go. So I, I genuinely, you can't see how bloody powerful this is. Let's get a bit of reverb as well. Got a good ARP. What ARPs have we got? Trance ARP? Trance ARP. Oh. <laughs> Let's go for the fast. So, Gen genuine, like that is the, the beauty I love about Anna is you can work within the sim. You can just do a lot within the sim. So currently with 70% off, we're doing it for like stupid money. I think 40, 47 quid, $60, 55 euros, something like that. Okay, let's uh, export that MIDI out. So the thing- What? what? Export yeah. the MIDI. So yeah, a lot of people want to be able to play something in. So let's record. We got, we got a- Kick in there. Let's get a wee kick just to get our timings. Oh, let's slow that fuck down again. Now, you can't export the MIDI on the audio unit version because it doesn't support MIDI out.
Beautifully played. <laughs> okay, we've got the Legato on. Quad ties. <laughs> quad ties, quad ties. Yeah, I don't think that uh, particular our melody was working with the trunks. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our MIDI um, coming through, Anna, and what we can do now, if we wanted to record that, because all we've got at the minute is just those, you know, notes that are triggering CMD. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we create a new MIDI track, and this only works with the VST, um, so you have to bear that in mind. Go to your channels and select Anna 2 which is the one you want to get the MIDI from. And then you click in the box below and that'll give you an option to select Anna 2. And then you can just hit record. So there we go. We've now go. got our original one. We can put that back on there. We can turn our CMD off. Yep. And our ARB off. ARB off. Okay. So you can go ahead and edit the individual notes. Somebody's asking on the chat, Phil. Uh... Uh, if you program a minor chord, it's not going to work uh, for every key. Uh, no, well, that's where the multi comes in because you can yeah. program, uh, you know, a set of chords that are in key on each yes. note. So, for example, I think on my prog, um, we do have presets in there that you can load up. So there's uh, single presets, which is just uh, chord inversions and stuff. There's millions of those, and then there's performance, which are so this, yeah, this particular. So I've went through and put sort of relevant uh, chords on each of the relevant notes. So you can, you know, just pick a preset on it and it's just an instant got all the right notes, you know, so yeah. you can even sort of like, if I wanted to say, I'll just put on a two on here and just I'll do a bass line, right? Yeah. So we'll stop that for now, take that off and we'll just do a bass line. Let's see. Let's get another, let's go for some synth wave. And we do have a new Anna 2 preset pack out, which is Anna 2 Volume 12, Progressive Epic Trance. It is amazing. One of my favorite drives, uh, bass lines. Okay, so. I can listen. I love that. Okay, with that particular one, so we can quantize that so and legato it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then if I just drag this over to our Anna, because yeah. we... Then we could add some dinner. So you get instantly from one note, you're just making epic arcs. Zoned out. You're gone. 
weißt du noch? What? <lacht> Is this thing working? Is this thing working? Sorry, just, can, can we just start the show and I'll just go and finish this track off? I, see, you just, like, this is what happens, if it, it just goes off. Uh, Mr. Winston Hurl... Uh, can we run a VT, Holly? Chris? Who says that? Why, do you need a piss? Yes. <laughs> okay. Run a VT and cut, cut, cut us up full screen, so if you're not back in time, I can... I can uh... Hi there, it's Matt Thomas from King of Leak, back on Sonic Academy, and I'm going to talk about additive synthesis. You see how I pronounce that very carefully? It's because this is about my tenth take of doing this intro, and I keep going... As somebody who's messed with additive synthesis in the past, additive synthesis, the prospect of messing with it is not always fill me with joy though it is a great way to make interesting noises. We're going to look at the history of additive synthesis. We are going back to the 1800s. And I'm going to get to tell one of my favorite synthesizer history stories of all time. Genuinely one that just fills me with giddy happiness whenever I think about it. My absolute favorite man in electronic music history, Thaddeus Cahill. I urge you when I finish doing a very brief history of Thaddeus Cahill to read properly about Thaddeus Cahill. In 1897, Thaddeus Cahill built what he called the Tell Harmonium, a vast, vast instrument which filled an entire factory floor and weighed 14 tons. There's no electronics. There's just electricity and like big, brutal, industrial revolution kind of technology like engines, levers, pulleys, yeah? Here is an oscillator. For you and me, even on like a 1960s move, an oscillator is about two inches of circuit board. For Thaddeus, an oscillator is a huge chunk of metal the size of a person, which spun round in these gigantic whirling tubes of death in his basement. Now that first machine was just a prototype. In 1902, Thaddeus brought his Mark II telharmonium to New York, and here he put on concerts. Now in order to put on concerts, people had to actually be able to hear the thing. And so Thaddeus used the recently installed New York telephone system. Now you think, what, you've got to sit there with a phone against your ear? No. What he did was worked out that if a really tiny voltage would make a voice that was just audible in your ear, well, if he plugged the telharmonium into the phone system and put a massive voltage through it, it would blast out a level of sound that could be heard across the room and like, actually deafen you and rupture your eardrum if you went, hello, who's that? Bah! 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 It's Thaddeus' his massive, insane organ screaming into your ear. So it was generally a good idea to know that he was going to ring you and play the organ. So for that reason, he started a subscription service, rather like Apple Music where you could like dial in and go, I'd like to hear insanely loud, pre-electronic electronic music blasted down my phone whilst I hold it at arm's length or possibly run to the far end of the room in terror. You see why I like this story? So these were the very first raves. Now, again, as you can see in this photo, that guy looking out at the screen, a guy, guy who's like staring at us with a kind of haunted expression. You think you've heard the bass like drop. Okay, you think you've had like a moment in a club. That guy's hearing something that's never been heard before. And it's coming out of a phone that's nearly melting. That guy is coming up so hard on the sound of the telharmonium that it's a wonder his head isn't like ripping off. That is the greatest rave experience in history, on your screen, now. Envy that man. There we are. Oh. It's our good friend Matt. Matt, who's uh, turning into a middle-aged woman before our very eyes. <laughs> so I think we should start a petition. Do you think he should cut his hair or not? What do you reckon? I think that's entirely up to him. Entirely up to him. So Winston, who's been very patient on the chat. Really? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to make a lately bass because it, 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 it's a bit complicated. The original uh, lately bass is an FM bass and it uses um, four... Uh, Operators. Four operators with a feedback loop on the last one. So you can sort of get close. Um, but this one is uh, an analog version of a lately bass. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not that. So there's two. I've sent you two. There's my version. You are you feeling it? Are you feeling it? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of God, kind of God. Okay, and then there's Luke Gribben's version. Oh, sorry, no one's, I wasn't switching there. Oh. Hold on. Load preset. Where did those go? Downloads. 
Myers, Myers, Myers. There we go. Completely base. Is this an FM one? Oh, this is the same one. This is the same no. one. It's not really. One's called Lily Base Chris, and one's called Lily Base. Yeah, and that's going to be in a new pack, is it, Chris? It is going to be in a new. We're doing a retro, old school, and famous, famous, famous cool. patches. So we're going to have lots of famousy things. So um, yeah, you can uh, do it. I mean, I've sort of had a couple of attempts in, uh, in Anna. I think did I, did I do it lately or solid, solid? Winston, uh, this pack is is just we're literally putting it together. We've just got the first sort of half of the patches in, so it'll probably be in the new year when we get this out. So uh, people ask, are you are you planning any more techno presets? Uh, we always love techno presets. Who doesn't? You can never have enough techno presets, can you? DX plastic. DX. Yes. So DX plastic is that is that in the uh, factory? Yeah. So uh, that Winston, was if... kind of my. That's kind of cool. Driver. Yeah. And if you. That's really cool. I like it. Yeah, that's your sort So there you go, Wednesday, you grab it. Uh, yeah, that is called DX Plastic Base 2, and that is in the uh, factory. factory bank, as so I, you, I believe. Yeah, so you can go and have a look at the FMness of that, and then the next pack we've got coming out, which will have like Blue Monday bases and Crockett's theme and Jupiter Brasses and all the classic big, big synth. It'll have uh, inner city stabs and all those big, big sounds that everyone wants, and they sound brilliant so there you go ah, that actually uh, sounds quite good it does actually i'm actually going to get off this uh, um okay so what about kick kick yeah. any quick kick questions we have kick questions are let me see uh let me scroll up here is render everyone always struggles why does my render sound different than the kick i've made okay that's good Okay, so the thing with rendering is you need to set your key. So, especially if key track is on here. Yeah. And also you have to pay attention to velocity. Yeah. So, uh, generally speaking, you want velocity at 100 or 127, and then you want to select the key that you're working with. So C0 might be too low. So you might want to go to C1. And then generate and export. You can also uh, just grab that and put it in your arrange as well. Yeah, you can. That's right. Uh, let's grab that Which and stick it in. It'll not let me do that. Hold on. I need to get an audio track. There you go. Um, you can drag it there, and then from there, can you actually drag it? I wonder, can you drag it direct into you? No. No. Drag onto it. itself? Yeah. Why can't I drag that back onto there? I thought you could drag, drag into the. Put it into the features box. So did that? Yeah. Yeah. Worked out fine. There you go. Um, I think okay. Let's. I think you can do this if you go show in browser and finder. Yeah, and then just re-import it. I think you can grab that there and drop it in one of these. Why is importing on the work? That's weird. It should you should be able to do that. You should be able to 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 grab and just re-drag it down. I wonder does it not like that file type? That's weird. Um yeah, so um yeah, I wonder why is that not showing up? Why can I not show that in browser? It's maybe not part of the because uh, it exports it to somewhere else. I mean, I, I know what I can do. It's freeze, a temp folder. Freeze, flatten. Yeah. That should, there we go. There you go. Just didn't like where the location was. And then you can check. There. So you've brought it into itself. And you know, some people, limiter, just a quick run over how the limiter, how you switch it on, how to switch it off, and what does the arrow mean? Okay, so... Let's just get our default preset back. 
So the arrow is the threshold. You can click the limiter name to switch it on or off. CP, I think sometimes people don't realize you can. Um, and the, really the idea is you don't want to be hitting the limiter too hard because it, um, it does distort the low end. Yeah. Unless that's the sound you want. Maybe you want more aggressive kicks. But it is just for taking that top sort of couple of percent off to give you that extra volume. And to stop it overloading your channel. Um, one other thing that always gets asked, tuning kicks, where's the area that sort of is the most tuning? Okay, tuning kicks, it's always, I always use the last couple of nodes so if you look at any of these sort of um let's go um like who tunes their kicks the most progressively people maybe uh, no <laughs> seemingly not um so basically the last two nodes if you really want the tune kick you can just make sure snap and tags is on and then you've got that whole section okay is tuned. It doesn't matter what happens, you know, in this this bit. No, because it's not really a note there. There's more of a punch. Uh, it's too short. Yeah. For the ear to detect a note. Yeah. So it's really just those last two. Is that us, Chris? That's us, Chris. Questions That's done us. for today. Questions done. Thank you to everyone who's joined. Uh, Thank you so much for all the questions you sent in. Thank you, everyone who's bought Anna to, who's joined in the uh, Black Friday sale. Uh, we hope to see more views uh, on the chat next week. Uh, don't forget, £49 to get you 10 months. And uh, Anna got 70% off and 40% off everything else in the world that is, exists on our store. How about that? All good? Yeah. All good. Uh, so, so... Uh, don't forget to get your demos into sonicacademy.com forward slash live with a capital L. Can't remember. A lowercase L. I a lowercase N. Uh, I can't lower remember. If, if lowercase doesn't work, make it a capital. It's definitely uh, lowercase. Definitely lowercase. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so when we're going live next time, uh, you will uh, get a notification that we're coming on and you can see our beautiful, beautiful faces. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank to everyone on the chat, to Fabrice, to Deadly Custard, Exit, Winston, Show Me The Lights, uh, Helix, Holmes, uh, to all the guys in the background, uh, Alid, Will, um, Breitsky, keeping us right. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye, Bye. Phil. Bye. <laughs>